welcome to another lesson on c -sharp basics as part of the dotnet learn wednesday series in this video we'll be talking about variables and calculations and we'll do some manipulations around variables accept input from the console and do lots of interesting stuff together so right here i have my code from the last lesson so what i'll go ahead to do is start a new dotnet application so i'll do .NET new console Output that and call it 03 variables and fun. And then I'll open up the program.cs file. And I'll delete the boilerplate code that was imputed for us. Next thing I'll do is I'll CD into the project that 03 variables in phone, and then we'll do some stuff. So in the last class, we talked uh, on data types and we declared some variables here. So basically what this means is that this data type that is of integer has a variable name of my norm. So by definition, a variable is a named memory location on the computer. Um, so if I go ahead and say int uh, my number equals five what that means is that in the computer memory at runtime this my number is saved there it means i can reference this name later on so i can go ahead and say console dot right line and output instead of outputting five in this case i will call it by the name and then if i do a dot net run on that i will have my program output for me which is 5 as you can see here I can also do same thing for strings and characters and I'll do a console.write line my name alright so I go ahead and do a dot net run on that. I will see these two variables outputted for us. Also, another thing we can do is perform some arithmetic operations based off of this. So instead of having me having to declare all this, let us actually accept input from the user. Let us accept an input from the console. So what I will go ahead and do is say, do a console the right line and welcome our users. Oh, we're rolling on the floor. All right, so we got that. So what we want to do is we want to accept an input from the user, but one principle of writing code is you make your code as much user friendly as you can. So what I'll do is I'll instruct the user on what they should do. So I'll say impute a number that should have actually been in a string. And actually, I'll make this a line. I'll make this a console dot right. Okay. And what I'll do, I'll now say int my first number equals hold on int dot parse console dot read line. Actually, I should make this a console the right line because I'll have a whole line right there. Now, what did I just do? You might say, what does this end up pass that I just introduced to us now? What this means is that the inputs coming from the console, which is any terminal they're using, whatever operating system you're on, is coming as a string. And I need to convert that to an integer value, which is my variable here. Another way to actually have done this, let me copy and paste this line. I could have said convert dot to instead to console dot read line these two work the same way but this is shorter for me to write that is why i used it. so i will just go ahead and comment this out because it will be in the code you can decide to reference it much later on so 
what I'll do, I will actually input another number, but I'll just do a little bit of copy and paste here. So I'll say input another number. Okay, so I'll call this my second number. And then what I'll do is I'll just add these two together and I'll put it to the user. So what I'll do is and sum is equal to my first number plus my second number. And then what I'll do there is I'll do a console the right lines. I'll output sum. Let me actually give it the name my son, such that uh, it, it's not matching uh, any sort of reserve name in C sharp. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this. And then we input a number just like uh, the program has instructed us. So we'll do eight and input another number, we'll put seven. And you can see the result here. But for me, this input is not as much as I want it to be friendly. So what I'll do is I'll make some modifications. I'll do with what I did here in subsequent lesson. So what I'll do is I'll use what we call a literal string. Uh, so I'll say the sum of Alright, so if I run this again, the program becomes more user-friendly to me. I will explain this when we get into very much deeper into strings, which is actually about two lessons from now. So I'll input maybe 65 year, I'll input 5 year, and you can see that this becomes much more user-friendly than we have over here. So that is one way to actually write program. I just thought I should uh, let that in uh, as part of this. So uh, we've talked about inputting to the console and getting that input and using it as a variable. So whatever data type you're actually declaring, uh, like we have here, you can make that into a variable. And there are rules to them in variables in C sharp. Number one is your variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. So for example, let me just say valid variable names. So an example is my int okay another example is my int normally if i tried this this would be invalid but if i go ahead and do this it becomes a valid name because it has an underscore in front of it you will see my program names actually have this sort of names and that is the sole purpose why i did this normally i should have started with variables on phone zero but i wanted the program to be sequential so these are valid variable names. Also, in between your variable names, you can also have this, but you cannot have spaces in between your variable names. You can also have numbers in between the names. You can also have the combination of numbers and underscore. Now, everything I've noted here, they actually have their names in C sharp. So what I've done here, this is what we call snake casing, where you have uh, the number, you have something like a snake crawling, and then you have another value, and then you have another snake and you have another value. You also have this, which is sort of Pascal casing, uh, Pascal in the sense that every word starts with a capital letter. So this is Pascal casing, this is camel casing, just like the back of a camel. You see, and it goes small letter to capital letter. This is a combination of Pascal and Snake. This is Snake casing also. So you can decide whichever one works for you. But the general one you see most C-sharp programmers use are these two. Most of the naming conventions you see in C-sharp for any programmer will be this. But depending on the team you end up working with, we will decide what kind of naming conventions they use on that team. So I hope you enjoyed this class. I'll see you in the next class. Bye.